Well, good day there, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve, and welcome to another episode of the uh, Typewriter Video Series. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about what size typewriter font is ideal for you, especially if you are a writer and you like to do part of your writing process using typewriters. Stay tuned. If you're a writer of any kind and you're using typewriters as part of your writing workflow, what is your ideal font size, typeface size? Do you like pica, 10 characters per inch? Do you like 12, the standard elite? Maybe the Hermes Rocket like this one is a little bit smaller, almost 13 characters per inch. Well, part of that decision is based on what kind of writing you're doing. And here's an example of some notes that I was taking just today with the Hermes Rocket at my favorite coffee shop, Rust is Gold, here in Albuquerque. And I was using this little 13 character per inch machine, making notes on the piece of this green engineering paper. And as you can tell, I was doing single line spacing but this is the kind of writing that's more like note-taking writing, the kind of writing where you're not really drafting a piece to be word processed later on necessarily into a finished published document. This, this is more like the kind of writing you do when you're making notes to yourself. And that's one valid place, of course, for writing with typewriters. And you might have a certain preference in uh, your typeface size, 10, 12, 13, whatever, based on personal preferences and aesthetics. Perhaps it's easier for you to see the larger size pica uh, typeface. On the other hand, maybe you have an aesthetic choice for liking the smaller size typefaces. One of the reasons why you might want to consider double spacing with your work is because the initial typing in the manual typewriter is just the first step of a series of edits and revisions that you're making. You know, many writers write in this iterative process of writing and revision and rewriting and re-revising until the work is considered finished or at least as good as it can be. And that's why many people find the typewriter is an ideal way to start one of these lengthy pieces. It's first put down on ink on paper in a typewriter and giving yourself room with double line spacing is really a great way to go into the next step of revision, which is to take that piece of paper and start crossing it out and revising by hand ideas, redoing sentence structure, phrasing, you know, rewording it or whatever. Some people from that uh, point like to then retype it on paper with a typewriter to see what it looks like before it gets transcribed or retyped into a word processor for the final stages of revision. Now what's interesting about this is initially that can seem like a wasteful step, retyping it, like a waste of time, a waste of paper, a waste of ribbon. But actually, if you think about it, we do this often, even with computers. Do you guys remember this thing? If you're old enough to remember back in the 1990s, people were talking about the paperless office. And the paperless office was the promise of what computers were going to bring to the act of writing and document creation. And they were going to get rid of printers and paper altogether and everything would be done on a computer screen. But really what happened was that people discovered that a lot of people find this to be true. I certainly have that looking at a finished document on a computer screen is still not the same thing as looking at it paper in hand in a printout. And so what a lot of people will do is they'll do some revisions on the document and then they're going to go hit the print button and print it out. And then they're going to take that print out, look at it, and decide there's something not right about that that I didn't really notice on the computer screen, but I do notice on the paper. And so I'm going to go set it down, go back to the computer screen, change it up a little bit, and then I'm going to print another copy of that and see how that looks, right? So this is kind of a common thing in the business world if you're creating documents with a computer and a printer. Well, in much the same way, it's really helpful to see what it looks like, to be able to read it, 
by retyping it. It's one thing to have scratched out certain words and phrases and writing in the space between the lines, the revision, but you really want to see what that reads like as a finished document, a more polished document. So that's one reason why you might want to consider rewriting or retyping after you've done that first stage of revision. And that's a good reason why you might want to have double line spacing when you're typing. Now let's get to the subject of specifically whether you might want to be doing first draft writing with a pico size typewriter or an elite size typewriter font. Well, part of that is obviously personal preference. We are all individuals. We like certain things that other people don't. So you might just prefer pica. You might, on the other hand, prefer elite. If you're doing writing or typewriting as a first draft, for a, a piece that's going to later be word processed into a finished electronic document, for instance, the appearance of the type on paper is not going to resemble what a finished document will resemble. The purpose of this is simply to get words printed mechanically on paper so they're legible, easy to see, and then you can more easily edit them. And in that regard, if you're doing double line spacing, on your piece, you might find that a smaller typeface like Elite or one of the even smaller ones like my Hermes Rocket I showed you that's a little smaller than the standard 12 characters per inch, you might find one of those typefaces is more economical on paper simply because the letters are smaller, you can fit more words, more letters on a line. And that makes the whole process a little more efficient in terms of how much paper you're using and how many sheets of paper your first draft is going to encompass. If you're old enough, like me, and remember taking actual typewriting classes in school, you might remember that your teacher or instructor might have required a certain size typeface. Commonly, Pico, I believe, was more common than Elite. And so, for that reason, you might have been raised with the idea that there is one correct typeface for writing with a typewriter. And I can understand, I can well appreciate how the things we learned when we were young kind of stick with us. But I'd advise you to think about this. There are other ways of going with this, and certainly an elite font typeface is more economical on paper, depending on your eyesight. And also another thing, uh, as far as legibility, is maybe it depends on the typewriter. Of course, typefaces that are smaller in size Often the uh, loops and the lo little circles in the characters clog easier on a typewriter with a smaller typeface. And so you might have to end up cleaning the type slugs a little bit more often if legibility is a concern. On the other hand, if you're not, you know, scanning <laughs> your typewritten pieces and putting them online, for instance, if you're not sharing them visually with social media. If it's just private writing or writing that's going to be later transcribed into a word process document, it probably doesn't need to look perfect. It just needs to be legible for you to read it so you can then uh, retype it and transcribe it, continue working with it and editing it on into a finished document. So don't necessarily think that there's only one way to go with this. Uh, we can find more efficient ways of working with typewriters. And that's what I, one of the things I love about the current era that we're in, in this typewriter revival, is that people are discovering what I call new usage modes for typewriters, how to use typewriters creatively in ways that perhaps they weren't considered in the same way back in the day when we were taking typing instruction because the business world required typewritten documents to look a certain way. So speaking of non-standard or non-traditional ways of writing with typewriters, here's another thing to think about. Some people like to see a two-page layout in their word processor program. They like to see two pages side by side, kind of resembling what a published book might represent. When you open a book, you have two pages side by side. And so another way to approach the idea of first draft writing with a typewriter is maybe take a piece of paper like standard letter size paper, fold it in half like this. So you have now a built-in backing sheet, 
right? Which is always a good idea to use with a typewriter. And then you can type first draft on one side, double spaced, and then pull it out of the machine, flip it over to the other side, and then type the second page or the, uh, the next page in sequence, also double spaced. And now when you open up this document, you have two columns of typeface side by side, and they're double spaced, so you can now do your corrections and you have more of a larger context of having two pages side by side, not just one. And this works especially well with smaller typefaces like the Elite, or, or in the case of my Rocket, my particular Hermes Rocket has the even smaller. It's nice to have that small size when you're doing the editing and writing because you can see more of the text side by side. And this gets down to uh, something that is related to typewriters, which is if you've ever seen an Alpha Smart Neo device, the Alpha Smart Neos have a small little LCD screen, and if you make the character size small enough to put five or six lines of text on that screen, they're going to be really blocky and kind of pixelated looking and harder to read. On the other hand, if you make the typeface larger, you'll have more legible writing, but you only see a narrow window of text at any one time. And I've done I've done a lot of writing with an Alpha Smart Neo, and I, I find that's the main limitation with that device is you have a narrow window to view your text, and outside of that window, you're kind of going off of your memory. You're kind of remembering in your mind what the previous text was or what the subsequent text was if, you're, if you've gone back in the document and you're, and you're editing and revising it. So it doesn't have the same advantage as opening up the whole sheet of paper and being able to see like two sheets, two pages side by side, or in the case of this document here, having a full letter size piece of paper top to bottom, being able to read and view the whole page all at once. That's the beauty, I think, of paper. And I, I love seeing that. And especially with a typewriter, when you start, like I've done here, I've just started writing on this piece of paper. But as you continue writing on the piece of paper, and as you get down further and further on that piece of paper, you'll find that you can easily see what you've previously written because that's coming up from the typewriter's carriage and it's now sitting back here high up above your typing point and you can go back and easily read that whole page previous to where your current printing position is as you're going and it is a really efficient way to to work in terms of a analog or paper-based or physical-based writing technology. When I like to write with a typewriter, I like to have a stack of paper maybe on the left side of the typewriter, and I like to have the sheets that I've finished working on on the right side of the typewriter, and then of course the sheet I'm currently working at is in the, in the machine itself. And what's great about that, of course, is you have access, ready access to the previous sheets. You could pull up the last sheet you worked on. You could sit there and read it and look at what you've, you're currently writing on this page. Really handy way of going in terms of being able to look at multiple pages simultaneously. You sometimes can't even do that easily with a word processor. If you have a really extra wide monitor screen or dual monitor screens, even in like Microsoft Word, you, you're going to have to go to a, a different page layout view to be able to view multiple pages. And then a lot of times the document size is small enough to where you can't really easily see the characters on screen. That's what's wonderful about physical paper and mechanically imprinted ink on paper is you can easily see it and manipulate it. Now another approach for first draft writing you might want to consider is what you might call the Jack Kerouac method of writing, which is he was famously known for using a roll of, I think it was teletype paper, uh, and when he wrote one of the first drafts of On the Road. And I've been able to replicate the idea with some artist banner paper that comes in 17 inch wide rolls and I cut it in half on a miter saw to make eight and a half inch wide, which is letter width for US size paper. This little uh, gizmo is just a brass fittings and with some picture frame hangers that I built specifically to work with a brother typewriter, but even like on the Skywriter, it doesn't quite hang off the back of the carriage uh, with these brackets. So you can simply set the roll of paper down uh, behind the typewriter on the table, pull yourself out a service loop, a slack, 
of paper. And actually, I like to uh, flip the roll around to where when it rolls through the platen of your typewriter, you're kind of reversing the natural curl of the paper uh, when it was in the roll initially. So let's get this threaded up here. But what this allows you to do is you have a seemingly endless supply of paper. It's not really endless, but it's seemingly endless. That is to say, you don't have to stop uh, mid-thought at the end of a sheet and change your paper. You have uh, an, a, a continuous stream of paper coming in through the typewriter, and so you can simply sit there and type and type and sling the carriage back at the end of the line. This kind of writing is really ideally, ideally suited for setting your machine to dual double line spacing because you're not going to be wasting a little bit of like an inch or so at the top and bottom of every sheet uh, that is the margin top and bottom margins you're not going to be wasting that if you think about the way you put together a document in in microsoft word every one of those pages has like roughly let's say an inch on the top and bottom margin well that's two inches of paper you're you're theoretically wasting at the interface of two sheets of paper. Whereas with this roll of paper, you're actually using that what would be wasted space. It's just continuous writing. So this is another way to uh, use paper with a typewriter for first draft writing. And this makes using a typewriter with double line spacing, and especially with elite size font, really efficient because what you might waste otherwise you're saving because you don't have those margins and so you can just keep writing and writing uninterruptedly and just let the scroll of paper hang off the back of the table as you write and let it maybe drag down on the floor even or you could even try to roll it up make a scroll of it as you're going but this is another efficient and fun way to use typewriters in the very early stages of writing the writing process that I'm talking about when using typewriters, as I mentioned earlier, is the typewritten document is not the finished piece. It's not like in the 1950s or 60s or 70s when you turned in a typewritten manuscript, pica size font, one and a half or double spaced, certain physical formatting characteristics that the publisher required you to have. No, that's not it. You're doing this for yourself. This is your raw data from your head in onto paper. Then you can go back with your red pencil or pen or whatever color you like to revise in. I like to revise in red. Actually, I prefer a red ballpoint. I just happen to grab a felt tip marker. I use a red ballpoint to edit. Then that document becomes a source document for the next stage of revision. It depends, of course, on what kind of writing you're doing. But most writers will tell you that writing is like 25% ingenuity coming up with new things from your mind onto paper. And the other 75% of writing is really revising what you have, polishing it, changing it. And that part of the writing process is more ideally suited, of course, to a word processor because of the ability to move words around and paragraphs around and whatnot. But the advantage that paper has on a typewriter is, well, you have the non-distractive nature of typewriting because Word processor software is hosted on general purpose computing platforms, which are these days intrinsically laden with distractions, email, social media, internet, blah, blah, blah. So perhaps for you, the writing process is more easily streamlined that initial creative part where you have to think of those things from your head right onto paper typewriting can be a really efficient way to do that. And so I'm encouraging you guys, if you're thinking about writing, and by the way, I think everybody should try to write. I don't believe that writing is something just for professionals to do. I think everybody should learn to use language and be creative with language, just like there are professional photographers, but that does not preclude us amateurs from grabbing a camera and taking pictures also. I believe there's a great thing to be said for amateurs, lovers of 
art, lovers of the, the word, to be able to use language themselves in their own expression. And uh, so I'm encouraging you guys to sit down with either a sheet of, sheet of paper or a stack of paper or a roll of paper like this one and put words to paper and think about what size typeface you think you might want to use. And I would encourage you to think about using those elite font machines you can fit more words per line more lines per more words per page and it makes it more efficient during the initial phase of writing well this is joe van cleave just giving you guys some encouragement to be creative with typewriters and until next time as always you guys have yourselves a great day